Every pool hall is going to hate me after this. What's going on everybody? Lil Chris here and in today's video we're going to take this game into the air by learning about one type of shot that most pool halls prohibit their customers from doing and that's the jump shot. Let's begin. So before we get started I just have to ask how many of y'all are guilty of jumping like this for the first time as I was when I first started to learn how to play? Pretty cool, right? But it's the wrong way to do it. Let's look at the right way to do it. So you might be wondering, why is jumping the cue ball like that not correct? Well, according to the WPA, the World Pool Association, they're calling this the scoop shot, where you're contacting the cue ball and the felt of the table at the same time. And they are treating this as a miscue. Not only are they treating it as a miscue, they're treating it as an intentional miscue. And the ruling of that is any intentional miscuing of the cue ball is considered a foul. But we're not supposed to confuse this with if you're trying to draw the cue ball off of an object ball that when you shoot the shot, you accidentally miscue and cause the cue ball to fly off the table. If you look at the scoop shot example that I did, I'm intentionally jumping over the one ball to try to make the eight ball by scooping the cue ball off the table. But if I was trying to shoot the one ball with draw and I miscue and it jumps off the table, that is not considered a foul. So you have to look at it by the scenario in which the player is shooting. What they would rather you do to jump the cue ball is strike the cue ball from above like this causing it to lift off of the table as we drive down into the cue ball and get it to lift off of the table. But there's a little bit more to it than just striking the cue ball from up above, and that's what we're going to look at today. So the first thing we want to talk about when shooting a jump shot is how your feet should be placed for your stance. Now, if you've seen my form fundamentals video, you should be accustomed to by now that when you're a right-handed player, your right foot will be behind the cue ball in the direction that you want to shoot. Your left foot will be forward off to the left side of your body so that we can face the direction that we want to shoot, allowing us to bend down from our waist and address the shot appropriately. And then if you're a left-handed player, your left foot will be behind the cue ball and so on and so forth. Now for a short player like myself, what I like to do for a jump shot is both my left foot and my right foot are now behind the cue ball but my body is facing away from the direction that I want to shoot. Because as I begin to elevate the back end of my cue, there comes a point to where I can no longer go any higher if I leave both my feet flat on the ground. So if I want to actually get higher than this, I will start to lean forward and put more weight on my left foot, and you'll notice that my right foot comes up on its tiptoe. And then sometimes I'll actually move my right foot behind my body just so that I'm well balanced. And then if I want to try to get any higher than this, if I need to, then I will try to get up on my tiptoes of my left foot. But normally, my left foot is flat on the ground, my right foot is on its tiptoe, and this is how I do a jump shot. Now I want to take a closer look at the bridge hand when shooting a jump shot. About 99% of all jump shots are going to be shot with the open hand bridge or the V bridge if you can actually remember from my form fundamentals video where you place your thumb next to your index finger knuckle and this little V that is formed between the knuckle of your index finger and your thumb is where your cue would be placed except the palm of your hand is not going to be flat on the table anymore. Now you're going to be up on your fingertips. But how high? Well, that depends on the elevation of the cue. Because you can see from here, I can actually keep all four of my fingertips on the table as I'm at least this high on the cue ball. But as I start to get higher, my index finger has come off the table. And then eventually my pinky comes off the table. 
and I'm only stuck with my middle finger and my ring finger. Now, some people might have long enough fingers to where they can probably still keep their pinky finger on the table, but I'm a short person with short fingers, so this is about what I can do. For the most part, when I'm actually going to perform a jump shot, it's three fingers that I have on the table and my index finger is actually hovering up into the air. Now let's take a look at the grip hand when performing a jump shot. You kind of got a glimpse of it earlier when I was demonstrating the stance. Whenever I get down to hit the cue ball normally, you'll see that my grip hand is underneath my elbow and my shoulder and my elbow and my grip hand form a 90 degree angle. This allows me to have a back swing and a full forward swing in order for me to follow through the cue ball. So as I begin to transition into a jump shot, I want my grip hand to stay underneath my elbow for as high as I can possibly go. And for my height, this is about it. But sometimes, depending upon how high I need that cue ball to actually to jump off the table, I might actually have to go higher. And in order to do that, I have to rotate my shoulder so now that my grip hand and my elbow are actually side by side, and then I can continue to go higher and higher if necessary. But for the most part, when I perform a jump shot, I'm going to try to leave my grip hand underneath my elbow for as high as I can possibly go. And the last thing I want to talk about before I start demonstrating jump shots is the cue that you use. You'll find that you can jump with practically any type of cue, but you'll also find that some cues are made to make jump shots easier than others. Now in the opening shot of this video, you saw me make a full cue jump shot with my Sean here. This is a 19 and a half ounce cue with a 13 millimeter shaft and a medium pigskin layered tip. I find that with this cue, I'm able to clear a quarter of a ball to half of a ball, but have a little bit of difficulty clearing over an entire ball. Next, I have this Viking cue. This one is only 19 ounces with a 12 millimeter shaft and a medium LePro tip. And with this cue, I find I can only clear a quarter of a ball and I have difficulty clearing over half of the ball and even a full ball, which I'm led to believe is because the diameter of the cue only being 12 millimeters. I find that if the shaft of the cue is bigger, it actually makes it easier to jump. Then I have this house cue that I bought off of Amazon. This cue is 19 ounces with a 13 millimeter shaft and I don't even know what type of tip is on here because the specs on Amazon says it's a glue leathered tip. But the tip is harder than a medium tip, so with this cue, I actually find that I can jump just as well with this cue as I can my Sean, where I can clear a quarter of a ball to even half of a ball. Then I have my specialty cues which make jump shots easier than any of my shooting cues. Here I have the Predator BK3, which is primarily made for braking, but because it has a phenolic tip on it, I can actually jump with this cue as well. And with this cue, I find that I can jump over an entire ball as long as it's not too close to the cue ball. Next, I have my Viking jump brake cue that I use for both braking and jumping. And the only reason why it breaks into three pieces is because whenever I find that the ball that I have to jump over is too close to the cue ball, then I take off this third piece and use what's left of the cue. Because I find that the lighter the cue, the higher I can actually get the cue ball to jump off of the table. And then lastly, I have my Predator Air 2 jump cue. This cue is primarily made for jumping. And the only reason why it has three pieces is because whenever you find yourself having to make a long jump shot, you would want to use the entire cue assembled together. And then anytime you need to do a short high jump shot, you would want to break this back piece off to make the cue lighter in order to get the cue ball to jump higher into the air. So are you ready for a few jump shots? because I'm ready to show you a few jump shots. Each one that I'm going to do, 
I'm going to be using my Predator Air 2 jump cue because I want to be able to demonstrate what it's like jumping with this cue fully assembled and when I take off that third piece whenever I need to make the cue ball jump higher. In this first example, I want to be able to jump over the 13 and the 15 ball to be able to make the one ball in the corner pocket. And hopefully from the other camera angle that I have set up, you can see from the measuring tape that the 13 and the 15 ball are two feet away so that I can demonstrate when you use the Predator Air 2 jump cue fully assembled to make long jump shots. Never forget to chalk your cue up whenever you perform a jump shot. Not bad, huh? For this shot, the 13 and the 15 ball are much closer, being only six inches away. So I'm more concerned about getting the cue ball higher into the air to clear over the 13 and 15 and make the one ball in the side pocket. So to do that, I'm gonna break the third piece off. That way I can get the cue ball to jump higher. Remember to not forget to chalk whenever you perform a jump shot. Nice. Do you remember earlier when I said 99% of jump shots are done with an open hand bridge? Well, this is one of the very few rare occasions you might actually see a player use what's called the closed hand air bridge when the balls that are in the way are so close to the cue ball. In this example here, the 13 and the 15 ball are only three inches away from the cue ball. Now I'm gonna be highly surprised if I can actually make the one ball but let's actually see if I can jump over the 13 and the 15 ball using the closed hand air bridge. You're also going to notice that my grip hand is going to be a little bit different because I'm actually going to shoot the cue ball like I'm throwing a dart. And your bridge hand must be very steady to hold in the air like this. Now even I'm impressed at that. For this last shot, I want to show you something that's going to look kind of funny. Because I don't think I've ever actually seen a professional shoot this way. But I've done it a couple of times, and I've seen other people do it quite a few times. In this shot here, I'm actually too short to be able to comfortably reach the cue ball in order to jump over all those balls and make the one ball. And also, every other kick shot is blocked by another ball. So believe it or not, I actually grabbed the bridge to perform the jump shot. This allows me to comfortably hold the cue at the elevated position that I need and still be able to jump over the 13 and the 15 at least to make the one ball in the corner pocket. Check this out. That's just silly, isn't it? So wasn't that a lot of fun to watch and learn? Now there's a couple of things I want you to remember when performing a jump shot. If you go back and look at the shots that I demonstrated, the first thing you should notice is that when I hit the cue ball, no other part of my body moves except for my grip hand. I've seen plenty of beginning players when they're first learning how to jump, they think they got to hit that cue ball so hard that they might throw their hip into the shot or they might throw their shoulder into the shot. Anything to try to generate enough momentum to get that cue ball off of the table and into the air. And I'm here to tell you that your grip hand can provide more than enough momentum to do that. Another thing I want you to be able to remember when you look at those shots that I demonstrated, I hope you notice that the tip of my cue never touched the table. 
And that's something very hard to do when you're learning how to jump, which is the main reason why most pool halls prohibit their customers from jumping in their establishment, because they're afraid that you might accidentally rip the felt of the table, which is a perfectly valid reason why they prohibit jump shots. However, some pool halls are okay with you doing jump shots, especially if you have your own jump cue, which does remind me. I can't begin to tell you how surprised and happy that I am that I have over a thousand subscribers. And I'm pretty close to actually getting 10,000 subscribers. But in celebration of having over a thousand subscribers, I'm going to do another giveaway. And I have a brand new Predator Air jump cue that I'm going to raffle off. The same rules apply like I did for my last raffle. Give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section below, and make sure that I can verify that you're a subscriber. So if your subscription list is private, please make it public so when I check your comment and I see that you're a subscriber, then you'll be entered into the raffle, which I'll have open for a couple of days before I close it off and then announce the winner in my next video. Until then, everybody, take care.